one of the deadliest Joes from the new school. We're jumping collector's numbers a little bit with Agent Helix. One way I got it figured. The way I got it figured. Swap figure fans, way I got it figured. Back with another G.I. Joe classified review. This time we're looking at number 104, Agent Helix in the G.I. Joe classified series line. I picked up Agent Helix a little bit early at uh, Big Bad Toy Store, along with Jada Toys, Chun-Li, about three weeks ago. Um, it takes them a week to send you anything. So I probably had it for about two weeks. Um, she came around the tail end of uh, when I was doing the week of G.I. Joe reviews. And I did want to get her in there. Um, but I decided to do Vipra instead and moved a couple of things around. Um, but I did uh, tell some folks online in the G.I. Joe Classified community that I'd, get this, I'd have this review coming this week. And there's still plenty of time in the week. But I decided to go ahead, flip the script a little bit, get her out. And, um, and I'll move on to the next figure uh, after that. Um, so Agent Helix is a part of the 50-50 wave. Um, what I mean by the 50-50 wave is everything's like got new parts, but it's all reuse of other figures. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing. I don't necessarily know that it's a great thing. Um, but, you know, I think in the previous wave, we got a lot of you know, new tools that then become reused later. In this wave, we're not getting anything that's all new. We're getting everything that's at least partially reused. And Agent Helix is no exception, um, which we will get into a little bit later. But as usual, we're gonna go over the box, go over the accessories, go over the figure, and do some comparisons and get you out of here with some final thoughts. So starting with Agent Helix box. box. G.I. Joe, Agent Helix. And she's in a SWAT team sort of backdrop, which probably seems more appropriate for Shockwave. But, and her, and Shockwave's background seems more appropriate for her. We'll get to that later. Obviously, it's not completely inappropriate for Agent Helix, knowing her kind of sordid history in terms of being sort of like an abducted weapon. Uh, obviously, we've got her loadout here. Some nice artwork of Helix, which of course we get again in a larger format on the side of the box. Got your QR code with number 104, your really tiny file card symbols. Then on the back, of course, you've got the tail of the tape. So have her sitting at 5.9 inches and her accessories and some inserts. Um, she's got the little computerized thing on her arm and a band-aid, which is a call back to something that happened in the comics and then we've got her file card symbols large enough that we can see them she's got a two covert ops two light weapons four marksmanship and three martial artists that's going to take take a uh, do it for our look at the packaging Moving on to Agent Helix's accessories. She comes with two automatic pistols with uh, magazines. The magazines are not removable. It's just one solid piece. She 
It comes with this kukri knife looking thing. Even though I'm not sure this is a kukri knife, but it looks like one. Two swords and a little tiny backpack sort of thing to hold the swords. You've seen this before. Uh, this came with the movie Storm Shadow and I think it's good reuse here because when else were you gonna use these? And then we come with these weird sci-fi arm blade kind of deals that other than in this review, I'm likely not gonna use. But we'll use them in the video. Now to take a look at Helix up close. Started with her portrait pretty cool portrait um even though i wasn't uh what i would call dissatisfied with cover girl i gotta say this one's definitely a better portrait i don't even i don't even think it's debatable then uh up here her top half head all the way down um to here is all new She's, uh, you know, she's, she's got an all new torso, arms. I can't go as far as to say the gloves, hands, but at least the arms and the, and the torso are definitely all new. From the waist down, it is, uh, Scarlet, 05 Scarlet, OG Scarlet. And, uh, you know, it works for Helix. Even if I think that this this particular mode has some issues with the drop-down legs and getting them to sort of stay in the right position uh, for standing poses, you know, it, it still kind of works. It's just kind of issues with the mold itself or how they ac executed it that first time around. Um, and as far as her, her articulation, I already got her doing the T-pose. But she's got the, you know, pinless arms. There's a butterfly joint there. Bicep cut, of course. Her head looks up about that far. Pretty much stopped by the hair. Looks down a very good bit. I'm gonna push her back like that. So she wants to do like a somersault or something. Her ab crunch in the front is not as substantial. I'm gonna get her to go about this far. It's not even about straining it, it just doesn't want to go any further. Usual thigh cut. Of course, the patented G.I. Joe classified series drop down legs. The scarlet boot cut and ankle rocker. the vertical wrist there you go all right so we'll get her geared up and see what we can see here we have agent helix geared up all her accessories um she's one of the a uh, few Joes of late that seems to be able to, or Cobras rather, 
that seems to be able to completely store all of her gear somewhere on her person. Um, we got the sort of weird combat swords in, you know, installed. I guess they don't seem all that bad, but I don't know. I'm not going to use them. So I'm not going to use them. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I am. I'm not going to. But, you know, they don't look terrible. Um, some people might want to use them. I don't know. Perhaps that's due to, you know, they somehow tie into her total battlefield awareness special ability that she has. Um, that makes her one of the deadliest people in the G.I. Joe universe. Um, I did put one of her pistols in her hand just to show that uh, she can hold it without issue. No problems at all. Not really nice, you know, very good grip on the trigger finger and everything. And uh, her knife stores on her belt. She's got certainly got enough blades. So yeah, she looks pretty, pretty cool. Um, I just don't remember these from the few comic books that I have read with her. I just think it's a new accessory or something. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. She's definitely one of the new school Joes. Showed up around the time of uh, the G.I. Joe movie. I think she was in some sort of video game. And then they ended up making a figure of her. And eventually Larry Hama folded her into the ongoing G.I. Joe A Real American Hero series that he's continued to write for IDW and now Skybound um yeah she's, she, she's been in part of some missions there for sure so there you go I think she's looking yeah, pretty good now we're going to do comparisons All right, first up for comparison purposes, for no reason in particular, I'm gonna bring in Tunnel Rat. Tunnel Rat's a short dude. He's about the same height as uh, Helix. Not, not, he might be a little bit taller, but not really, not, it's negligible. Then we'll bring in the obvious comparison, 05 Scarlet, this one being the uh, field revision. I never did see what was so terrible about this Scarlet. Um, I don't think the sculpt's bad or anything. I actually like this Scarlet, but I don't get it. For comparison with an average size G.I. Joe classified figure. We'll bring in my main man, Alonzo Wilkinson, aka Stalker. And for a little bit bigger figure, we'll bring in. Big Ben. That's how she stacks up in size with these guys. All right, let's move on to final thoughts. 
Final thoughts on G.I. Joe Classified Series 104, Agent Helix. Um, I was very glad to get this figure early. Uh, you know, with the way they released these figures all at once and weaves and everything like that. You know, just to sort of spread out the money, so to speak. And I'm sure a lot of us are doing that. I went ahead and took the chance and got her early. I probably should have got Buzzer too, but I didn't get him. Um, just to, you know, make it that when they when these guys all release on Hasbro Pulse, you know, I only got to buy three of them. But I didn't. I did end up getting somebody else from the Wave, which you'll see in the next week or so. Um, but uh, I do think she's a good figure. Um, maybe it's mine. She doesn't want to stand up all that well. I do have to work with her a little bit. And I just think it's maybe just from the lower half being the scarlet mold. Um, that, I don't know, I just don't have the best experience with standing up. But she looks great. She definitely looks the part, has the accessories. And, uh, and I like the color, you know, the gray and yellow. It's a very cool, very cool color scheme. So... Um, you know, with all the reuse, I can't give her a 10, um, but I can give her a nine. I do think that this figure is, you know, on the face of it, a nine figure. Um, you know, I'm not going to penalize all Agent Helixes for the fact that mine doesn't want to stand up so much. And as you can see, she is standing. Just got to work with her a little bit. All right, guys, it's going to do it for this one. Um, in the next G.I. Joe Classified Series review, it'll be a Cobra figure. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be the next review, but the next time you see a G.I. Joe Classified review, it'll be a Cobra, uh, an agent of Cobra. So uh, that's going to do it for this one. If you're new to the channel, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel i'm certainly trying to grow the audience and uh leave a comment what do, you, what do you think about agent helix lover hater passing grabbing let me know if you are um obviously already subscribed to the channel thank you so much i appreciate all of you and in this thanksgiving week i certainly want to wish you all a happy thanksgiving and the best and everybody stay safe see you on the next video Peace. The way I got it figured. <laughs>